Imagine there's currencies out there whose values went from zero to tens of thousands in just a few years. What are they? How were they created? And what do they do? In this episode of Voice of Crypto, I'll be answering all these questions and more about cryptocurrency and blockchains. By the end of this video, I'll have you speaking fluent crypto, so let's get started. To start off with, let's understand what a cryptocurrency is. A cryptocurrency, or crypto for short, is a decentralized digital currency. In simple terms, these digital currencies aren't governed by or dependent upon a central authority like a bank or a government to control, maintain, or uphold it. Was that confusing? Let me break it down for you. Let's use the most popular cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, for example. Bitcoin was created on a blockchain using cryptography without the intervention of a central bank, as in the case of fiat, which is rupees or dollars. While the Federal Reserve in the US and RBI in India are responsible responsible for their monetary systems, Bitcoin has no single organization in charge of it. Cryptos can function as a medium of exchange, a unit of account, and a store of value. Unlike fiat currency, most cryptos are decentralized and operate peer-to-peer -peer without any intermediary. In fact, decentralization is one of the most important aspects of cryptocurrency. As cryptocurrencies are not issued by a central body, they cannot be controlled by one either. This makes them immune to all methods of government-controlled transactions and interference. These currencies exist outside the reach of banks and central governments. Before we dive deeper into the exciting world of crypto, let's go over some basic crypto lingo you're likely to hear often. If you're new to the whole crypto space, pay attention. The first word you're going to hear a lot in this space is blockchain. At its simplest, a blockchain is a peer-to-peer -peer network. In this network, you have blocks, which is a reference to the collection of data they hold, and chain, which refers to a public database of these blocks. These are further stored as an ever-growing, endless list of records. And these lists are linked together using cryptography. Which brings us to our next word in crypto lingo, cryptography. Cryptography is a method of developing techniques and protocols that prevent a third party from accessing and gaining knowledge from data acquired from private messages during a communication process. The word cryptography stems from ancient Greek with cryptos meaning hidden and graphian meaning to write. Cryptography is an essential and fundamental requirement of creating a blockchain where its main purpose is to protect user privacy, transaction information, and ensure data consistency. Got it? All right, let's move on to decentralization. Decentralized finance or DeFi comes up a lot in conversations around crypto. As we discussed earlier, decentralization is a transfer of control and decision making from a centralized body to a distributed network. Simply put, this just means to move control from a single source to several smaller ones, so no one entity has complete control and say over the entire system. Decentralized networks help reduce the level of trust one must place in another and deter their ability to exert absolute authority over the others in a way that deters the functionality of the network. Now, to put that simply, we give our money to banks to keep it safe, correct? But do we really know if they actually have this money? It almost comes down to blind trust that they're keeping our money safe, isn't it? In a decentralized network, Work, no one has to blindly trust anybody else because everybody has the exact same data. This way, everyone knows exactly what's going on and nothing is left to trust. Now that we've got all that down, let's move on to the last thing that you might have heard of but may not fully understand. Crypto mining. Crypto mining is how Bitcoin and other cryptos are created or generated. The process of mining Bitcoin involves the verification of transactions against the Bitcoin network, which results in the production of new coins. This entails massive decentralized networks of computers from around the world that verify and safeguard blockchains, which as we discussed earlier, are virtual records of crypto transactions. Fresh crypto coins are rewarded to computers on the network for contributing their processing power. In short, Crypto mining is a virtuous cycle where the miners keep the blockchain secure and the blockchain rewards them with coins. These coins provide incentive for the miners to stay on the network and keep contributing their processing power. Now that we've covered some important crypto lingo to get you started, let's go over some fun facts around crypto. Fun fact number one. Did you know the first commercial transaction for crypto was to buy pizza? On May 22, 2010, a man in Florida paid 10,000 Bitcoin to buy two pizzas. At the time, 10,000 Bitcoin was worth only $40. At its peak, 10,000 Bitcoin was worth around $69 million. To commemorate this transaction, crypto enthusiasts from around the world coined this day Bitcoin Pizza Day and it's still celebrated every year. Fun fact number two, the crypto markets never close. If you've seen any movies around the stocks and bonds markets, 
you might be familiar with the famous bells that mark the start and close of every trading day. Crypto markets remain open 24-7 and do not follow weekends or holidays, which means you can keep trading crypto across all hours of the day or night across any time zone in the world. Fun fact number three, no one knows who created Bitcoin. This is one of the most exciting mysteries of our time. Little is known about the person or group of persons that go by the name Satoshi Nakamoto, which is also widely believed to be just an alias. In October of 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto published a paper titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. For the next two years, the Satoshi Nakamoto persona appeared to be heavily involved in the early days of the creation of Bitcoin. However, it was in December 2010 that the last message from the Satoshi Nakamoto persona was posted on the Bitcoin forum. Although a few unverified personal messages have surfaced from April 2011. The last correspondence anyone had with Satoshi was in an email to a fellow crypto developer in which he claimed he had moved on to other things. Considering communications to Satoshi were done via email, there is a significant lack of personal information. And this is why at this point it remains impossible to find the actual identity behind the Satoshi Nakamoto persona. Along with this last message, Satoshi's involvement with Bitcoin ended just like that. The inability to put a face to the name has led to significant speculation behind the identity of Satoshi Nakamoto. Even more so now that cryptos are so popular. Given the price of Bitcoin today, Satoshi Nakamoto would be a multi-billionaire as it's rumored that he holds 1 million Bitcoin. At the peak of Bitcoin's price, that's worth $69 billion. Over the years, several people have claimed or were thought to be Satoshi. Names like Elon Musk, Craig White, and Nick Sabo were the most popular among these. However, the true identity of Satoshi has never been and may never be revealed. And with that, we conclude today's episode of Voice of Crypto. I hope this video has helped you develop a basic understanding of crypto and piqued your interest around them. In the next video, we'll expand upon our crypto knowledge and dive deeper into more crypto and Web3 concepts. Until next time. Before diving into some serious